In the 1930s, Don the Beachcomber created a drink with the most unoriginal of names, the Caribbean Punch, but the most unusual of all of his ingredients. This cocktail contained sarsaparilla. Beach Bum Berry shares this recipe in Sip and Safari as an unpublished recipe from the notebook of Dick Santiago. Fast forward to today and the Tropical Standard Book shares a drink called the Languid Bell, replacing the sarsaparilla with a homemade sarsaparilla syrup. The drink has 11 ingredients and calls for specific rums. And while it's ultimately up to you if you find it's worth your time to make this drink, I'll just say that I've already had this drink three times now and it's one of maybe the best drinks that I've ever had. But it might not be for you. A lot of people don't like root beer or sarsaparilla, so that would be one of the biggest determining factors for this one here. And not to mention, it does have a heavy dose of absinthe. And to my overall point about absinthe, in the right application, it's amazing. Use just to use, and it can often ruin a drink. When I first made this a few weeks ago, I was alone when I tried it at first, and I said, holy shit, out loud. But there's an emotion this evoked that's personal and not something I'd ever experienced in cocktails. We talk about taste or flavor, aroma, and presentation, or the look of it. But what about nostalgia? I grew up in Northern California and spent a lot of time in the Sierra Nevada foothills. Most of my summers, really. The gold country region, or the mother load. If you've ever been to Old Town Sacramento, Columbia State Park, Sonora, or many of the other small towns in the foothills, you may have come across old time candy shops or soda fountains on dusty streets with horse-drawn carriages and local stage actors performing stagecoach robberies, the kind of place that smells of black licorice where they still serve sarsaparilla. So that combination of sarsaparilla with absinthe and that licorice flavor and aroma, it's pure nostalgia for me. It's a cocktail to remind you of your childhood. In Sip and Safari, Beach Bum Berry guesses that the Caribbean punch may have been inspired by the soda fountains of Don's youth. And when you read Tropical Standard, you can see the inspiration from the soda fountain days and the work shared by Darcy O'Neill's book, Fix the Pumps. But nostalgia is a tricky business. You can find yourself nostalgic for a time that you never even experienced, even remotely. Something that predates your life by 180 plus years. So for me, is this the greatest cocktail that I've ever had? It's quite possibly. Is it the greatest cocktail that you'll ever have? Maybe, probably not. It's still gonna be very good regardless of your childhood, but will it live up to my hype? The only way to find out is to make this for yourself. To make the sarsaparilla syrup, start by scraping three vanilla beans and placing them into your saucepan. Add one milliliter of food grade wintergreen oil, 18 grams of sarsaparilla bark, 227 grams of sugar, and 454 grams of water. Bring it to a simmer on your stove, cover and turn the heat to low for 15 minutes. Turn off the heat and let it rest in the refrigerator in a separate container for 24 hours. Finally, strain it and bottle it. Wintergreen oil is a common component that you'll see in sarsaparillas and root beers. When you're making this at home, your house is gonna smell better than it ever has before. Uh, I don't recommend subbing something for this syrup. Uh, I've tried it and it just doesn't really work. But if you're looking for a good sarsaparilla, there are some solid ones out there like Sioux City and Snake River. If you're looking in the grocery store, Barks will get you the closest to real sarsaparilla flavor that's not a real sarsaparilla. But I still don't think that you should try to make this without making your own syrup. If you're interested in the original recipe for the Caribbean Punch, finish watching this video first and then head on over to our Minders channel, The Rum Revival, where he and I will actually drink that original cocktail along with four other cocktails using the Eclipse Navy Strength Rum. And in that one, we use just a regular sarsaparilla. To make the Languid Bell, you'll need Saline solution, almond extract, Angostura bitters, lime juice, grenadine, ginger syrup, sarsaparilla syrup, absinthe, Panama Pacific nine year rum, Barbon Court five star rum, and soda water. We're gonna build this in a drink mixer tin with five drops of a saline solution, six drops of almond extract, three dashes of Angostura bitters, 
three quarter ounces of lime juice, half a teaspoon of grenadine, one teaspoon of ginger syrup, one and a half ounces of sarsaparilla syrup, one teaspoon of absinthe, half an ounce of Panama Pacific nine year rum, two ounces of Barbancourt five star rum, and two ounces of soda water. We'll flash blend this for five seconds. All right, so let's try this. You're getting the absinthe and the sarsaparilla flavor there. The rum's kind of in the background, but it has this like refreshing mintiness because you can pick up that wintergreen oil that's in the sarsaparilla syrup, along just hints of that sarsaparilla bark. And to me, it, it has the flavor of what I feel like that aroma of black licorice should be without tasting like black licorice, which I really don't like. Now, the reason you can't really use a sarsaparilla here is not only just the, the color of it that looks muddy, but in the drink, it actually kind of muddies out everything else, it kind of washes over everything. It's a little bit too intense, but this syrup is, is a lighter syrup that just highlights some of those specific flavors that you're finding in the rest of the drink. The ginger syrup provides just like a little bit of a pop there, but not too much. It's not spicy, but it kind of works with that minty absinthe anise flavor to really like make this so unique, so original, and yet so different. And while there's rum in here, the rum's in the background. I don't feel like this tastes like tiki. It doesn't taste like a tropical drink either. To me, it's what I imagine a soda fountain cocktail would taste like. And whether that's because that's what it's kind of saying that it's gonna do, or it's in my mind somehow, but I really do think it plays up all of the ingredients to make something that's so original and different. And for me, it just, brings back those like flavors of sarsaparilla in the best of ways and getting rid of some of like the sweetness, getting rid of kind of too much of that vanilla flavor you get in modern root beers. So for me, this does hold up. This is something that I will always have the, the recipe memorized to, to remember as long as I have that syrup on hand and I even have that recipe kind of memorized to make that syrup. Now, if you wanna see what it's like to taste the original one, then like this video first, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and then head on over to our Minders channel at the Rum Revival, where we try five cocktails, including the original one from Don the Beachcomber. And I'll tell you, I thought that one was okay, but it doesn't really compare to this one at all. This is kind of taking the idea of that one and making something that's really just so much better. And when you're over on the Rum Revival, like and subscribe there as well. You know, people out here making stuff like this, they need people's support. So go support our Minder because really no one else is making rum content like he is. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like below, consider subscribing. If you wanna support this channel, you can check out the Patreon page uh, to support us there. We do happy hours every couple months. There's some behind the scenes stuff. We have a Discord and, and overall, just a solid group of people that like rum and tiki and tropical drinks. So that's it for this one. See you on the next one.